Hello, I'm Darius the Nerd, and I play Magic the Gathering, in case you didn't tell. I've talked about this on my TikTok and other videos. Um, yesterday, I managed to pick up something which I was quite excited for, which I wasn't able to get due to, you know, a small pandemic going across the world. Um, it is the box Unsanctioned. Yes, it is a Magic the Gathering set, based on the unsets, if you're unfamiliar with the unsets, they are basically parody joke cards meant to really like add a lot of chaos and weirdness to Magic the Gathering games. Of course, the cards themselves are not legal in standard format, so modern, standard, vintage, these cards can't be used. But I don't play those formats, I play Commander, and although Technically speaking, uncards are banned in Commander. Commander is a non-competitive format. Meaning, as long as your playgroup's okay with it, you can use uncards. But, not only that, this particular box is meant to be sort of its own, like, cube. But not quite. I'll get into that. Essentially, it's got a, five different five-coloured decks. There are five different monocoloured decks. That's the word I'm looking for. Now you can combine two of them together to make one deck and then you play with those, that deck. It also includes a few other things like token cards, which I love tokens. I don't know why I just love token cards. Dice, although they look like standard D6s instead of um, turndowns. It's kind of disappointing because I would have liked a unturned down. And they contain land. The land is very special. We'll get to that in a moment. For now, I've got myself a little knife. Don't want anything too sharp because I don't want to damage the box. And. Uh, struggle. Come off, really. Uh, nope. Okay, got there in the end. Plastic off. I'm quite good that with the coat, use a special ceiling plastic with wisdom case on it so you can tell fakes just a little thing um okay let's open this up oh that's that's fine and almost there come on new box smell let's put that over here okay actually immediately i'm liking the format set of the box it's more than I expected, but I like it. So you've got the five decks here. Unfortunately, they don't come in cardboard boxes. Um, I know the anthology sets do. These do not. Um, I'll look at those in a minute. These are actually, ooh, these are really nice D6s. The numbers are slightly angled, which is only a little thing, but it's nice in the colour itself. And they're pretty light, but I've got enough weight for a decent roll. Got a four. Ain't that nice? Um, I like them. Oh, I did not realize this, but it seems the land are shiny. Uh, yeah, you can all see it there. The shiny plane. These lands, the people are actually quite frustrated with these because these are really nice lands. Like the art is so nice, the style of it. But you can only get ten of them at a time from the unsanctioned box and. Apart from second-hand markets, you can't get them by themselves. And for to get them second-hand is awkward. Because, well, you might have to buy the box because they'll be really expensive in a few years. So I'm still debating do I want to open. But they do have a corn stash. Let's, let's grab a deck box to put the land in ready. Okay, I've got myself a gold deck box. I love this deck box. Bought it um, like the second year of playing Magic. Really nice. Okay. Open this up. Uh, yep, yeah, shiny plain, shiny island, shiny swamp, shiny mountain, and then a non foil version for the rest. Yep, yeah, let's just put this away in here. I will find actual sleeves for them in due time. Uh, what do we have here with some tokens? So we have got Bibli? Bibli? We have the double side. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, they're quite nice. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, if I remember correctly, there are some Dungeons and Dragons themed cards in here. 
you can see sort of the um, monster manual style text behind that dragon. Uh, let's start with the photo. Giant teddy bear. I don't believe they printed this token the first time around the giant teddy bear car. The car that made the giant teddy bear token. I don't believe they printed the token right the first time round. So it's quite good that they're adding these tokens again. Acorn stash for the squirrel cards. Oh, new goblin tokens. Can't argue with a good goblin token. Uh, oh, that's a bit disappointing. Squirrel. Where's that same artwork? It's good artwork, don't get me wrong. It just worth like some different artwork for a squirrel. And yeah, three dragon tokens. That is pretty cool. I like those. Okay, where do we start? One, two, three, four, five. Roll dice. One. White. White top card, Flavor Judge, which is choose target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control. Then like a person outside the game if the story of what will happen makes sense. They say no, sacrifice Flavor Judge and counter that spell or ability. Ah. Uh, Yes, I'm seeing this one. So essentially, if these two creatures fought, what would actually happen? For example, the um, classic 12 squirrels and an Eldrazi. Well, Emrakul. Would it work? Don't think the squirrels could beat Emrakul. And as such, that would fail the flavour judge. Flavour text. Okay, so let's get this open. Yes. Is that... No, not quite shiny. Okay. Flavor Judge, F Frankie Peanuts. Is this a mobster? Well, elephant rogue, monster rogue. That's basically pretty empty enough. Most rogues turn to mob mobsters. Begin with your upkeep. You may ask type player a yes or no question. If you do, that player answers the question truthfully and abides by that answer if able until the end of the turn. So, will you counter this spell? Yes or no? Yes, I will counter that spell. Cool. So you then they have to counter the spell. I like it. Oh, yes. Oh, that is cool. Got some of the um, oh, like tester cards. Uh, not much to look at. So look at me. I'm R and D. I do like the fact that the cards they print in the background of these stickers are, well. Like expensive cards which you would hate to see. Because there is actually a story. I think it's a moat. That has a stick on top of it for card. I don't think it was even made. Back then, moat was common. So they just use that one. Look at me. I, I'm i R&D. Enters the back. Um, enters. Oh, this is awkward. Because it's got all the blue text across it all out. So try and read it. Uh, look at me, I'm R&D, enters, uh, add, enters, uh, choose a number and a second number, one higher or one lower than the first number. All instances of the first chosen number. Okay, so essentially, pick a number, pick a number, number, but every instance of the first number used on cards, it becomes the second number. That's really messy. So, play one token could turn it into 10 billion tokens. I like it. It's an enchantment. Uh, so, that's two and a white. I need to, I got to look at the card. I'll find out what its actual um, statistics are. Look at me. I'm the DCI. Bad a card of a basic land card for the rest of the match. Match. That's an interesting one because uh, that's best out of three or best out of five, depending on how you want to play it. Uh, until the end of the turn and this turn's effect doesn't end. So until the end of the turn and this turn affects it. Wow. Wow, that's really powerful. I like that. Ah, Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Yep, okay, so that is a critical creature gets plus two plus two and have potential from rogue and cleric. Rogue is relevant, I'm not sure about cleric. No, clerics are relevant. Remember now, there are many of them. Whenever a cryptic creature deals combat damage to a player, create a 4 4 gold dragon creature token, which we have, and roll a d20. 
if you roll a 20, repeat the process. Yeah, easy enough. Uh, night lifelink, dealt damage by knights, you control over the cause you to gain that much life. So, knights get lifelink in a way, but it's separate to actual lifelink, so you can stack it, which is quite nice. Oh, yeah, some of the uh, mutant cards, experiment cards. Exile target attacking creature, then remove it from the game, then put it into the absolutely removed from the freaking game forever zone. So another zone after exile. Uh a wool. Do some more interesting stuff. Just see what ooh humming. Just one of the half mutant cards. It's combined to make a whole creature. Like, there's some definitely cool stuff in this one. White generally isn't my colour. Add one mana of any colour, spend my only cast a silver border card. And then we've got our lands, which are the normal art. I wish we could have got the new art, even if it's going to be in that style, just because, you know, I like lands. That's white. I like it. White isn't generally my colour. There's definitely some cards in that I would like to use. Uh. Let's go with blue. Blue is always fun. And the front card. <laughs> I'm a Magic Gathering card. Alexander Clamilton. Alexander Clamilton. Whenever you cast a wordy spell, scry two. A spell is wordy has four or more lines of rules text. Oh god. That's quite fun. I wonder though. Is it the specific copy of the card? Or is it, if it'd been Oracle or anything like that? Because obviously some cards aren't wordy when updated versions or older versions contain more words. Two type creature you don't control reveals top card of your library. Alexander Clamilton gets plus X plus zero until the end of the turn where X is the most line rules text that reveals. I'm trying to think what cards could be used with that. There might be something fun. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure if you look at Legends, if that Legendary definitely um, vintage card, you'll find a lot of um, really messy things to fill that up with. Uh, avatar of me. That so apparently that avatar is some um, hella sexy walking person. Uh, this spell costs one more to cast for each ten years you've been alive. Ouch. Oh, out. I feel sorry for some players who use this card. Uh, after me, power is equal to to your highest, to your height in feet, and its toughness is equal to your American shoe size, round to the nearest one half. Avatar of me is the colour of your eyes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I love it. Uh, so, I'm going to work all stuff out before I use this. Or at least bring a tape measure with me every time. Bob, can't pronounce that. Ah, it's a it's a place walker, which is very nice. As Bob, bravery of Beeblees, and it is a Bob type card. Enter the battlefield, create one one blue Beeblees creature token. The number of lords you counters on Bob is equal to the number of Beeblees you control. Create or sacrifice Beeblees whenever Bob gains or loses lordy counters. Okay, so. They have to go back and forth, but it's tokens. You can manipulate this. Uh, plus one, up to X target Beeblees can't be blocked this turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Draw a card. Okay, not that good. Like, yeah, you can mass produce loyalty counts on it, and I know there's ways to move loyalty counts about. But to be fair, if you're putting that much work into building a Planeswalker deck using this card, you might as well build a legal one. Chicken a looking. Whenever a 64 and a 6 side dice, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each bird. You may roll dice only when instructed to. So essentially you can't just sit there and keep rolling dice. Tap an untapped bird you control, roll a 6 side dice. Like now. Hmm. Aha! Johnny Combo Player. Or search your library for a card, put that card in your hand and shuffle your library. I'm going to build a commander deck around this guy one day. Because it's just so good. You just put a card in your hand. Bam. Done. So it's simple. Uh, Richard Garfield. PhD. 
You may play cards as though they were other cards of your choice with the same mana cost. You can't choose the same card twice. There's actually a version of mana you can play, now I pick like a quick fire version. But essentially, have any card you want. Yeah, again, a card I want to build a commander deck around. So I'm loving the artwork, the fact that you know, upped it up with all the uh, stonework titling and stuff like that. Go and get the angle right. There we go. Uh, what we got next? Water gun balloon game. As water gun balloon game, it is a battlefield. Put um, e player puts a pop counter on zero. There's some artwork only of the text is hard to read. When a player casts a spell, move that player's pop counter up one. When a player's pop counter hits five, that player player's creature that player creates a five five pink giant teddy creature um token and resets all pops. Like, that type of stuff is so much fun in Commander. Everybody can get advantage. Some group hud decks will love it, I'm sure. Uh, bring the up key. Um, sacrifice a creature and let you say it's flavor text. Save a kill spell to deal with this guy. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Oh, wait, is this the one I think it is? No, it's not. If Clayface is in your hand, you may sneak Clayface onto the battlefield. If an opponent catches you right away, that player may exile Clayface. I love the idea of that. Just sneak it onto the field when they want to look. Whenever a player casts a spell without asking your permission while casting it, count that spell. E. Whenever a player asks you permission to cast a spell and you refuse, count that spell and sacrifice this card. I like that. I like it. It's fun. As many would enter the battlefield, choose a word, whip of the chosen word. Tap and chant. Whip the truth of the word, tap and chant creature. Okay. I'm sure that because there are cards that rely on words being said, so you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, it was a rock lobster. Time out, voice excited die, put target non implemented into, into its owner's library just beneath the top X of that card library where X is the result. Uh, I think for the pile, getting confused because some cards are upside down. Of course, this card is meant to be upside down. Like, even the border, even the background back of it is upside down. I'm going to flip it this way around to read it. The phase of each player's turn are reversed. The phases are in reverse order, ending post combat, main combat, pre combat, main, and beginning. As long as there are more than two players in the game. The turn order is reversed. Bloody hell. That is a messy card. I love it. Oh, I need to use that. Wall of Fortune. You may tap an untapped wall you control to have that player revolt re a dice that that player rolled. I literally like this. And I feel like this could easily be an actual magic card and not just an uncard. You need a six? All right. F1. She needs a six. I wonder if they ever do that. Put uncards into the main set. Underdome, that's the second copy of Underdome I've got now, and of course some islands, eh, not bad artwork, not my favourite, not bad. I think the fact they've got all the same artwork is sort of helpful, it just sort of means you don't have to fight over which art you want to use. Yeah, I'm like it, obviously I like the uncards and I have to find ways to use them. I do plan to build a uncommanded deck at some point, specifically though I don't know how to put it together. Acorn S, uh, fashionable flitcher, squirrel. It's a black squirrel, black set. Whenever you cast a squirrel with, whenever you cast a spell with a squirrel in its art, you get an acorn counter. We obviously seen the acorn stash there. Whenever a squirrel you control enters the battlefield or dies, you get a acorn. Two and black pay X, and acorn pay X. Pay X acorns, target creature gets minus X, minus X near turn. Green, pay X acorns, target player gets plus X, plus X until the turn. Okay. I mean, it's not bad. Black squirrel is a bit iffy because of the primary green. Still. Ah, this card. Everyone loves this card. No one likes it, but everyone loves it. Enter the dungeon. Players play a magic sub game under the table starting at 5 life and using the libraries as their decks. 
the winner searches their library for two cards and put the cards into the hand and shuffle their library. If you actually look at the artwork, you see a little bit of food and some coins on the floor. It's amazing. Infernal Spawn of Evil. Inferno Spawn of Inferno Spawn of Evil. It's Inferno, Inferno Spawn, Spawnington the third. Uh, the top two are pre-existing own cards. I love these. I used them in a demon deck I built for a little bit because they are useful demons. But I haven't actually taken a proper look at the third incarnation, which I definitely want to use. So it is a... It's meant to be Demon Beast, but I've been corrected to Beast Demon Grandchild. <laughs> Flying First Strike Trample Haze. This spell costs three less to cash for each card re you've revealed this turn. When Infernius Spawning Turn the Third enters the battlefield, you may say, I'm here. If you do, it deals three damage to a target player. Like, it costs 11 mana for a 9 9. But if you go 7 7 8 8 9 9. So hopefully we get another one. Jack in the Mox. One six sided dice, this ability has the indicator effect. One, sacrifice it. Two, three to six, you get a coloured mana. Go of artifact in it. Boost the tutor. I love this card. I got another one like this. I don't think it's boost tutor, I think it's a different card that does the same thing. Ooh, I don't know something. The Jack in the Mox. You actually see that in this artwork on display in the corner. That's nice. A little touch of detail. Open a sealed magic booster pack. Reveal the cards and put one of them into your hand. Like, I just want to build a deck where I can map produce that and buy a booster box. Uh, yeah, we got some of the mutant cards, which I haven't used yet. I haven't seen anyone use them. They seem fun. I just think they're a bit... Peculiar, difficult to use. Might have to try build deck on them. Uh, duh. Destroy target creature with reminder text. Reminder text is any text is. I can't read these things. Dyslexia, so it's fun. I know what reminder text is. When players understand that the creature is being cursed by two parents, got a chance. Uh. Boosted Halfling has flying as long as being held above the battlefield. So as long as you literally pick the card up, it can fly. Weird little details. At the beginning of your upkeep, Rory sick. Ooh, I could have thought with that, I might actually have to set up a little thing to constantly keep it um, hovering off the floor. At the beginning of your upkeep, Rory six sided dice on a one, a three or four, put a one one counter on this card, or a five or higher, put two counters on this card. On a one, remove all plus one plus one counters from it. Yeah, decent enough. I can see that being an actual magic card. Uh, anything else interesting? Black, it seems a bit meh. You may tap Snickering Squirrel. To increase the result of a die, any player rolled by one. Yep, yeah, you can just increase dice rolls. And then again, you can use this to, um, with that other card, to change that one to, like, a million. And Underdome. Yeah, black is a bit clear. It's fine. You've got some cool artifacts. And I think that's sort of its highlight there. Red. Okay, the top card looks fun. Uh... A lot of little attention to details, I like it. Let's get this open. Well sealed. Okay. Blast from the past, obviously bordered, um, made around the old art style, around vintage legends, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, madness, one red, cycling, one and red, kick, kicker, two and red, flashback, three and red, buyback, four and red, blast from the past, deal two damage to any target. The spell has was kicked, created 1-1 one, one goblin creature token. Yeah, like, that is literally just an abundance of old magic cards. I like it. Might have to look at some rulings on it, see which abilities work together. The cycling should discard it, but then Madness should be able to activate it. So yeah, if I ever make a deck around it, I look up. Boom Stacker, or Boom Tracker. A uh, boom stacker enters the battlefield and whenever it is attacked, stack two dice on top of it. 
All dice must be stacked vertically, one on top of the other. Boomstacker gets plus one, plus one for each die in its stack. Boomstacker attacks each combat is able. When the stack falls, sacrifice it. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, whenever it attacks, so you can... There might be magnetic dice. There might be something you can do to really pile, pile it up. Infinite Elemental. Technically the strongest card in magic because it has infinite attack. Uh, although you can technically make creatures have infinite attack, you have to limit it because loops. Um, it's so infinite that flavor text says it's so infinite that flavor text says it's so infinite that flavor text says it's so infinite. And kind of like that. I like that. That's fun. It's only three rare and four and is an elemental. Elemental is, they have a lot of power. They have a lot of stuff that could help them. Spin pointy finger of doom. Pointy finger of doom. That's literally what it's called. I like it. That's funny. Uh, doom in the middle of the table so that it rotates completely at least once and destroy the closest permanent the finger points to. I mean, you can, fortunately you can rig that easily and it might not spin so well, especially if you use like a matted case. Like, I can't even spin it on this surface. So you might have to find a little turny top thing to stack it on. Uh, legendary creature dramatic proofreader. When the right proofreader attacks, you may excel a card from your graveyard. When you do, the card deals four damage to any target whose name begins with the same letter as the XL card. Blue, did, that's like one white, delete the first letter of type permanent or player's name until the end of the turn. Player's name? Really? So I would be Arius. Huh. And would that mean that, that the A would then become the first letter so I could do this until I have no name? I'm going to assume that. Yeah, it's like. I assume that there might be a, a use for getting rid of a player's name. Uh, Boris six sided dice. And it has the perfect effect. One, do nothing. Two, destroy your artifact. Three, destroy your lands. Four, Deal three damage to each creature and player. Each player discards cards. And discards their hand and draws seven cards. Repeat the process two more times. Yeah, decent card. A lot of chaos. That's what you want. Yet another Aether Vortex. <laughs> That's funny. All creatures have haze. Players play the top card of their library revealed. Non instant, non sorcery cards on top of the libraries are on the battlefield under their own control, in addition to being in the libraries. Okay, that, that's mental. That would be a lot of fun in, uh, that, with Vortex and Flavor Text. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun in Commander, like, really cause chaos. Hmm, I suppose I work in a Sadiqi deck because technically the top card be on the field and in the library, so if it gets destroyed, it'd be sent from the library to the graveyard, which would then trigger abilities. That's okay. Whatever you cast, that's going to mill stuff. Okay, there's a lot of potential with this. I might have to think about that and come back to you. Whenever you cast a spell, Note the first letter of its artist name that letter wasn't already noted. Put a plus one, plus one, plus one capital on this guy. So you want to have as much artwork as possible. Basic land would do that. Because I'm sure there's more than enough artists who worked on basic land to do that. Uh, other creatures you control wearing hats in their art have menace. I like that. Goblin SWAT. Say Goblin SWAT team. Put a plus one, plus one capital on Goblin SWAT team unless the opponent... Swaps the table in five seconds. Okay, so Goblin Swap Team Swap. By the place you could just keep. I don't know, you can only do it once per turn. But then you could do it each first turn. That works. Uh, roll a six side dice. If you roll a one, Goblin Tutor. That's pretty cool artwork. Uh, has no effect. Otherwise, search your library for the indicated card and put it to your hand and shuffle. A card named Goblin Tutor. It's annoying because you only get one. An enchantment, an artifact, a creature, and into a sorcery. So you, that's pretty decent. I told you to get one. If you roll a die, instead roll two of those dies and ignore one of those results. Yeah, that's really good. Like, legitimately a good card. It's not even joke funny. You know, his artwork is. Uh, pandemic. Yeah, panic. I misread it. Phew. 
Uh, I'm going to be upkeep for a six sided dice. Uh, the card gets plus X plus zero to turn where X is the result. Are you sure these uncards? Some of them are like legitimately useful. Paper lizard, which defeats paper tiger. Uh, call a bit. It called underdome and some land. Yeah, good artwork. I like that. Some fun cards in that, definitely. Uh, but now for the one I was actually looking forward to. Green. Uh, ooh, top card is Bingo. I don't open this pack. There we go. Yeah. And Bingo was his name. Trample. Whenever a player casts a spell, put a chip counter on. On its. Uh, on. Put a chip counter on its converted mana cost. Oh, I see. Yeah, because it's got the artwork. It's a bit weird. Uh, bingo gets plus, plus, plus nine, plus nine for each set of three numbers in a row with chip counters on it. Uh, how many will that be? That'd be nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six, forty-five, fifty-four. Uh. 63, 72. Wow, it could become 72, 72. If people play stuff between 1 and a uh, 0 and 8 mana cost, which is commander, that's gonna happen. Old Foggy. Oh god. Bazing, Clumative Upkeep 1, Echo, Bathing 3, Bands with other dinosaurs, protection from. Whole main snow covered plane walk flanking rampage two. Oh jeez. Put that one with the stats are equal to ten years of your life. A legendary creature. Oh, clearly supposed to be yep, the Queen of Hearts. You can see the dice instead of the playing cards. Nice little touch, I like it. Roll six sided dice, it becomes a green Die creature token with power and toughness equal to its result. Reroll any dice at face ability only any time it makes sense. I like that. When it makes sense, like yeah, just just do it when you can. Don't be stupid with it. Squirrel farm. Reveal a card in your hand. Covering the artist credit target opponent guesses the artist. If they guess wrong, create one one green squirrel token. I'm gonna have to find the most obscure art. And land because I want to build a squirrel commander deck. Sergeant commander, not general. Uh, Legendary creature, one bat, bat chameleon. Whenever you, whenever you augment, enchant, or mutate a creature you control, draw a card, and you could add white, blue, black, red, or green. So that could be a five color commander, which is pretty neat. Uh, I'm sure you can make a very good deck out of it. I just don't know what top of my head right now. Timmy Power Gamer. I, I don't like Timmy's, I'm not going to lie. You may put a creature card from your hand into the battlefield. Yeah, and nice. It doesn't say cast, which is very nice. It's Schumann Gamer. Schumann's actually a, a important heart type, so be careful with that. Ah. Oh, God, it is so much. So many cards. Oh, try to get the artwork in there. Okay. Uh, it's all five colours. So you destroy target land for black. Destroy target enchantment. Counter spell. Gain X life. Destroy target artifact. Yeah. Pretty fun. Definitely fun. Five colour decks. Bronze calendar. Spell to cast. Cough one less to cast. You must speak in a voice other than your normal voice. When you speak in your normal voice, sacrifice bronze calendar. I like it. I really annoy people. Elvis Impersonator. So, an Elvish Impersonator. That reminds me of uh, Soul Music by Terry Pratchett. Because there's a guy in the shops who looks Elvish. As Elvish Impersonator enters the battlefield, roll a six sided dice twice, its base power becomes the first result, and its base toughness becomes the second result. Uh -huh. I like it. Entirely normal armchair. Uh, 
Roll for perception. During your turn, if entirely normal arm chairs in your hand, you may hide it on the battlefield. Return entirely normal arm chair to its own hand only. Only any opponent may activate this ability and only if they see entirely normal arm chair. Sacrifice entirely normal arm chair. Destroy target attacking creature. So you can sort of sneak it into the battlefield. Yeah, I haven't got a mana cost, not even zero. No, I'm pretty sure I counted zero. Uh, free range chicken, roll six sided dice. If both results are the same, free range chicken get plus X plus X. I take a turn by X as a result. If the total of those results is equal to any other total you have rolled this turn, for its ability, sacrifice it. What? So, for example, if you roll two threes, it gets plus three plus three. If you roll a four and a two for ability later that turn, sacrifice it. Okay. Okay. Growth spurt. Roll six sided dice, target creature gets plus X plus X until the turn where X is the result. And some guy breaking out of his art box. I like it. Half squirrel, half combined with squirrel. Whenever a non token enters the battlefield, then then you get the rest of the bit in the other card. Um, augment, that's what they're called. So you can have half squirrel, half kangaroo. A creature enters the battlefield, while six sided dice, put a number of one, one counters on creature equals the results. Meh. Slaying Mantis, so it's the proper wrestling against some goblins. Uh, just a second, as long as this card spell is on the stack, players can't move cards on the battlefield. Slaying Mantis enters the battlefield by being thrown from a distant alley three feet. When Slaying Mantis enters the battlefield, it fights each creature and opponent controls that is touched as it enters. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I like to specify though, it doesn't say anything about it not being torn up, which is the confetti card. Uh, the very old magic card, and if you throw it, uh, wherever it landed on, it will destroy. But then someone's like, well, it doesn't say you can't tear the card up, so you did, and scattered it. And they made a card for that. Underdome. There we go. Yeah, that's a very fun card. You can obviously find out the entire set. For yourself, and there is a little instructional booklet on how to play with these. Oh, cool, got a full deck list so you can reconstruct the deck as appropriate. And it has it looks like it has recommendations for combining decks. I enjoyed it. I think it's a really good set. I think it's a lot of fun. I think you have a lot of fun with it. Um, I do plan to build some commander decks using this stuff, or at least one. Um, although I would quite like to play with it as it is, as intended, um, easy enough to do. What I have to do is make sure to keep the list. Uh, I feel like you could have put more cards in, maybe like a bundle of cards which are separate, like artifacts or special lands. So I just entice it. And the tokens could have been slightly better, or they've got some really cool tokens, and they got the new border art um, as of earlier th this year, last year. Oh, uh, I just feel they could have added some more stuff to it. But at the price tag, you can't really argue with it. I do wonder though, do they follow card education humanity and add anything under new? Oh, they should have printed something like an Easter egg. What are you doing looking at this? Yeah, if you are into the unsets, I would definitely recommend you get this. Have a lot of fun with it. Um, the other key with it, I think the ability to just get certain uncards is invaluable because certain ones are quite expensive, quite rare, quite difficult to get a hold of. Just because, you know, they're uncards, they aren't really being traded about as much. So they sort of get lost in people's collections, I think. But for what it's worth, for what it is, can't really argue with it. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. Keep it sealed up for a while until I build a commander deck. Uh, what ideas do you have for uncommander decks? What do you think I could potentially build using this or other uncards which exist? I I would like it if they did a box like this for the conspiracy set. And a whole lot of conspiracy cards. Sort of a box to make a cube with. Um, so you get all the different fancy team uh, multi-match game cards, like the voting cards and stuff like that. 
or even if they print a second unsanctioned set so that you could combine the two together have a bit of fun with it you know they could add the colorless or waste uh mana cards or they could just well i think they should add purple after that what i think they should do for uncards add purple as they once expected to do and what fun have you had with this um with the unsets the uncards right let me know Put in the comments or you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Links will be below down that way. And until I see you next time, and uh, until I show off the commander deck, I'm sure I'm going to try and build with this. Have fun. And until next time, bye for now.